I think it's fair to say that no two updates from the Home Assistant team are ever the same, and the September 2025.9 release is no exception to this. So if you like to keep up to date on the releases and see the features coming your way, then you need to keep watching as I go through what we can expect to see this September. Hey everyone, my name's Simon and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek, a channel that focuses on home assistant and a smart home technology. Now, the summer can be quite a quiet time when it comes to updates for Home Assistant, but it seems like the team have all decided to stay at home and bring us a whole set of new functionality for the September release. I've been taking a look over this new version to see what we can expect, and I think you're going to really like some of the new features. I think it's fair to say this is a bumper UI release. Now, this is the beta release of the next version of Home Assistant that I'm gonna go through, and therefore the final release may not contain everything shown. We may find that some things don't make it because there might be a problem, and it needs to be pulled and saved for a future release. Or sometimes we may actually get some additional items added. As always, I'll put a link to the release notes in the description of this video, should you want to go and read about it yourself in more detail. So let's take a look at what new functionality we can expect to see in September. Starting off with new features and September will probably be remembered for featuring a lot of UI improvements. The team have again been working hard to make Home Assistant accessible to as many people as possible. And in doing so, they've built upon some recent additions and added some lovely new functionality. Plenty of users seem to really like the areas dashboard that was introduced recently. And so now we've got a new home dashboard. Anyone starting out with Home Assistant will have come across the default dashboard that gets created for you. Basically a dumping ground of all the devices that can be found and used within Home Assistant. The new home dashboard seems to be building out something that many of us ultimately start to create once we've got some basic understanding of how dashboards work. The new dashboard is gonna provide that complete view of your home so you'll be able to see things like your areas, your lights, climate control, security, all those kinds of things. Now, this is going to be an incremental addition to Home Assistant. In this release, the configuration is a bit limited, but expect the team to take on board feedback from the community and rapidly build this out in future versions. I think this is a brilliant addition for many people, not just those new to Home Assistant. So hit the like button if you think the same as well. Given all of this then, the home dashboard is going to be classed as experimental and won't appear automatically, so you'll need to manually add it to your system to try it out. Now, cast your mind back to the Home Assistant roadmap for 2025. Uh, you did read it, didn't you? Well, you know, if you missed it, I'll put a link in the description of this video. However, one of the goals for this year for the team is to make automations via the UI easier to create. And in this release, they're starting out with a new panel to the side of the automation you're editing. So basically, you'll have a nice overview of your automation on the left and on the right of that panel, you'll be able to play around with the behavior of the automation. And it's been noted that obviously, you know, people do automations on mobile devices where you've got a slightly different uh, screen real estate, so the layout will be uh, a little different, but the concept will be the same. And to top things off, there are a number of small UI changes scattered all over the place. Now, hands up if you're a user of the tile card on your dashboards. Uh, well, you know, it has to be one of the most versatile cards available at the moment, especially with the recent changes. Well, in the September release, we can look forward to some superb new functionality coming our way. Starting with the new ability to display a nice little graph on the card, which you, know, you could use that for showing, say, power usage on a device, for example, or you know, maybe you want to show when presence is detected in a room, similar to 
kind of like the uh, graph that you see in the entity details. Well, now you can absolutely do that. There's new features on the tile card to do that as well. If you've got climate systems or maybe ceiling fans, then there's now a new feature to control the fan direction and oscillation. And if you're controlling valves, maybe on a garden irrigation or you know, maybe your water supply, then now you've got a valve open and close positions for the card as well. And as if that wasn't enough, we'll also now have support for date and date time entities, which allows you to set the date via the card, which I am sure many people will find very useful. I think there's some great new functionality on the tower card, and I can't wait to try this out on my live system. Hit the like button if you're looking forward to using that on your system as well. After the last month's mammoth list of new and updated integrations, this time around we've got plenty more to look forward to as well. Top of the list is the Seiko Pool Dose, which allows you to hook up your Seiko water treatment system for your pool or spa uh, to Home Assistant, allowing you to monitor things like temperatures and chemical levels. Next, there is the Sleepers Android integration that allows you to connect uh, the app, which has got the same name to Home Assistant. So now you can trigger automations based upon alarm clocks or sleep cycle events. And that sounds really cool, that integration. Let me know in the comments if you're likely to use that. And last on the list of new integrations is the two grill Bluetooth barbecue thermometer integration, which allows you to connect your compatible grill thermometer uh, to ensure you're cooking your steaks to absolute perfection. Updates to existing integrations include changes to the Husqvarna auto mower, so now you can reset cutting blade usage time. The Rio Link integration, again more changes for this, now has a speak and doorbell volume control uh, and a chime silent time number entity as well, so really welcome additions there. Uh, users of the PlayStation Network integration will now be able to send messages to their friends with the upgraded uh, integration. And if you've got a Unify switch, then you'll now have individual switch port control allowing you to enable or disable ports. So I'm sure a lot of you will welcome that. Now, if you weren't aware, integrations in Home Assistant have a quality scale, which represents how well the integration is coded, how maintainable and testable it is, as well as how good an end user experience it provides. In this release, we have a couple of integrations that have now reached platinum status, and they are Network UPS Tools, or NUT for short, and Uptime Kuma. So these perfect integrations for adding to your systems monitoring dashboard. It's brilliant to see the hard work from those contributing to these being recognized in the releases to make these integrations better for everyone. Moving on to other notable changes in this release, well, there are some nice little updates for us here. It would seem the community wanted the modern template entity syntax to support setting a default entity ID directly in YAML, and well, that wish has been granted. We've also got the addition of cubic meters per minute being added as a volume flow rate, and there are some nice quality of life improvements to the voice side of things with fuzzy matching support for the intents on the default agent. Uh, we've got a nice way to ask Home Assistant to turn up the volume on an active media player, and also a new intent to control fan speeds, which is perfect timing for all this hot weather we're enjoying at the moment. There's also a couple of UI improvements as well. So we've got uh, the clock card that was introduced back in April release. Well, that's now been updated to allow you to choose either a digital card or an analog display card. And looking very familiar indeed, the storage configuration panel now has a new disk metrics display, allowing you to see what is taking up all the space on your system. In this release, we've got just a handful of breaking changes, so we'll quickly take a look at those. First up is a change to the encoding for some units that might 
contain the uh, Moo character. Uh, there are a few units listed in the release notes that use this. I'll pop them on the screen now. If you consume state data from sensors that have changed, then you will be impacted by this. Next is one wire, and that had previously had a notification that the raw value attribute was being deprecated, and as such, that has now been removed from Home Assistant. And the Husqvarna Auto Mower integration now requires the Auto Mower pin when you set it up so that Home Assistant can communicate with the more secure models in the product lineup. SIA Alarm Systems has a change that remaps the alarm status code CF to armed away rather than armed custom bypass. So if you have any automations, scripts, whatever, looking for that, then you'll certainly want to update that one. And this SwitchBot Bluetooth integration has removed the battery property on vacuum entities, and that's being replaced with a battery level sensor. So anywhere where you're using the old value, again, automation, scripts, dashboards, etc., will need to be updated. And finally, the Yale August integration now uses OAuth authentication with the uh, Yale's official API. The release notes state this is a one-time breaking change. Uh, the unofficial authentication method will stop working soon. So best to switch over now before it's too late. So that's all the changes and new functionality we can look forward to in the September release of Home Assistant. I'm really liking the new dashboard functionality and the start of improvements to automations. What are you looking forward to in this release? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more of these, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really does help with YouTube's algorithm and lets other people get to see this video as well. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.